let's talk about grades. Because while yesterday was rough, we had the best offensive performance we had in a very long time. We played absolutely amazing on offense. And to be honest, now with Amarius Mims coming out and saying that he's good, he's healthy. And that yesterday, you know, he had like a little shocker on his uh, ankle. But other than that, he's good to go and we're not having a problem. Which is the most beautiful thing ever because we really thought yesterday it was done. Like he was done for the season. And that's not the case. And that's why, again, you don't overreact. Uh, that's why I think a couple people in my stream said like he had an ACL tear. And I was like, nope, let's not say that until we officially hear from the doctors. Because anything could happen. And it's very possible that it's a nothing burger. And it ended up being a nothing burger, thankfully. Anyway, reason why I'm so happy that it's a nothing burger is because Cody Ford put up a 24.9 grade-wise. And, uh, yeah, no, that's horrendously bad. And then also, Zach Moss had a very, very bad game as well in the pass-blocking department, that is. Excuse me. Pass blocking department, very, very bad grade. Uh, we saw a couple of times that Kyle Hamilton just simply got the best of him. Either pushed him back, got around him. One sack happened because of Zach Moss not being able to block his guy. It was not great. It was not great at all uh, when it comes to him blocking. And the sad part is, right, he's, getting, he's having to block Kyle Hamilton, okay? Kyle Hamilton's a really good safety. But this isn't TJ Watt or Miles Garrett. And the sad part is, we're going to play both of them. And Zach Moss is going to be asked to block, help block both of those men. And that's the scary part. Because those guys, when they come in, it isn't like Kyle Hamilton where you just got to try to chip him or do something. They're going to run through you or they're going to throw you. Like, especially running back position. So that's what's was very scary. Cordell Volson had a piss poor game. Um, now, I don't blame Cordell Volson. And I don't blame Teddy K. I do blame Kappa. Kappa also had a very bad game. Um, if you watch the clips, we'll go back and we'll do the reruns of it and kind of break it down. But here's what I'll say about the offensive line. Once Amarius Mims went down, it was a struggle a bus because Cody Ford did not look good. And he didn't look awful, but he, and again, he does come in at 24.9 grade, but he was getting pushed all around, upside and down. And because of that, the rest of the offensive line struggles, okay? When one guy on the offensive line is awful, the rest of the line is having problems too because they have to try and find a way to overcome for that mistake. So because of that, the rest of the line will struggle. But Kappa was struggling early. I would say the very first half in the first part of the game, the real big issue, actually our line was actually pretty good for the most part. And then once Cody Ford went down, Kappa was struggling early in the game. But once um, Amarius Mims went down, Cody Ford came in. Cody Ford was clearly the weak link. And, and that just caused all bunch of problems across the board for the rest of the guys. I'm not saying there's no excuses for the grades they put up. But I think these grades need to be looked at in a vacuum of what were the grades like after Cody Ford came in versus before Cody Ford came in. You have to look at things in the vacuum because, again, this was a very long game. It was an overtime game. It was not a short game. Run blocking grades, um, other than Chase Brown, we really didn't find much run success. Yoshi was actually our best run blocker, ironically enough. Um, but, again, like I said, it was a very piss poor grade-wise bum the offensive line in general. Um, again, if you look at it in the vacuum, I don't think it was that horrendous. But when you look at it in the aspect of the whole game, and again, you're going to do that, it was not great at all. Um, offensively, our best player was Jamar Chase. That's not in question. Then it was Joe Burrow. Then it was T. Higgins and Mike Gesicki. I'm surprised Yoshi's not up here because Yoshi had a couple of really good catches yesterday and looked really good as well. 
From a defensive side here, run defense, we had a really great run defense. I know a lot of people are going to stat sheet watch, and I get it. I understand that. But if you watch the whole entire game, uh, we really made Derrick Henry non-existent. Other than the last run where, yes, I think our defense just gave up. Um, because, listen, it is what it is. We They didn't use Derrick Henry. And the reason why is because we were shutting him down every time he ran the ball. Um, again, I know the last run really messes up stats, but the fact is we were shutting him down. He was a non-existent factor and really it was him and Lamar Jackson couldn't really run on us. So between those two guys, we shut those two guys down and our real big problem was letting up the passing game. And, you know, our run defense that we thought was really going to be a problem in this game ended up being our biggest strength and our biggest issue was pass rush and shutting down the pass and you know that's something that again you know losing uh Dax Hill uh losing Mike Hilton not having them in this game I think really did uh, hurt us a lot um and you know it is what it is at the end of the day <laughs> pass coverage snap wise uh we did see Jordan Battle actually play this game he actually got beat by Mark Andrews on one of the plays uh which again you know it is what it is um, Mark Andrews is one of the best for a reason, but he only played six snaps, six coverage snaps, five, um, six pass of rush snaps, uh, five coverage snaps. And it's like, even though we had so many problems, injuries, they still refuse to play him much at all. I mean, Dax Hill got hurt early in this game. He played more coverage snaps than Jordan Battle did. You would think with all the injuries and all the lack of time that, you know, Dax got to play in this game, that he'd be like crazy way more snaps than Jordan Battle. I mean, way less snaps than Jordan Battle. No. For some reason, Lou did not want to put in Jordan Battle. Still, even with injuries, even with problems, even with issues, even with everything going wrong, we refused to use it. And again, pass rushing grades... Piss poor as always. I mean, this is just a common theme. We're not able to get after the quarterback. And we let them sit back there and we let them dot us up. We let them do whatever they want to do. You know? And it is it is what it is at the end of the day. But it's what really is killing us right now. Is we're not getting to the quarterback. We're letting them sit back there. We're letting him all day, all night to chill. We are now shutting down the run. We have been. Uh, you know, this week we did really good against the run, but we can't get to the quarterback and we can't we can't stop a nosebleed. And when you give the quarterback six, seven, eight seconds, and we saw yesterday with Lamar, and we saw this throughout every single week now, quarterbacks can get out of the pocket. They can outrun our defensive players. They can make plays. You know, they can just kind of move around and kind of do it at ease. And when that happens, you get destroyed. Your cornerbacks can't hold forever. They can't cover forever. Um, when you have eight seconds for your cover, for your defense to try to cover, you're going to lose. So, um, yeah, no, it's, it's an age-old problem. And the sad part is we know the issue. Our run defense has gotten better because we've gotten guys back. But the problem is every guy we got back outside of Miles Garrett, or Miles Garrett, which, Miles um, Murphy, is a run stuffer. I mean, Sheldon Rankins is our only interior pass rusher who is still hurt right now. But outside of that, you know, Chris Jenkins, run stuffer. He's not a pass rusher at all. McKinley Jackson, run stuffer, not a pass rusher at all. Um, what's his name? Um, BJ Hill, run stuffer, not a pass rusher at all. All of our guys that we got back was run stuffers. Which, yeah, we did good against the run because we got our run stuffers back. But we still lack a pass rusher. We really do. I mean, you see Lamar rolls out to the right-hand side, and he just throws Sam Hubbard off him like he's a three-year-old child. That's embarrassing. It really is. Um, now, I know Hubbard's dealing with injuries, and he's been dealing with injuries the whole entire year. He's came out and said that, that really he shouldn't be playing. He's just playing because he wants to play. But that's that's embarrassing. Like, you can't let that happen. I mean, we had Trey Hendrickson at one part of this game where he had Lamar Jackson in a sack, and he just literally slides out of um, Trey Hendrickson's hands. And I get it, yeah, Lamar is elusive, Lamar is, you know, nifty, he can kind of do that, but we can't let that happen. That Those are mistakes that cost you a game. You know, if, you, if the guy's in your hands, you got to make the tackle. I don't care what your excuse is, oh, well, you know, he's nifty, he can do this stuff. No. 
Your job is to make the tackle. Your job is to get that guy on the ground. I get it. It's easier said than done to do that, but it does not matter. That's your job. You're getting paid for that. You're, you're top of the level because your job is to get the guy down. It just, mm. it's frustrating. And it's simple mistakes like that. Something we really lack on is tackling as well. We need to work on tackling at this point. But I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.